When we request permission in our app through the relevant APIs that grant access to sensitive system features, it is very important that we have foreseen all possible cases in advance. For example, what happens if the user decides not to give permission? Or what happens if they deny the access forever? Normally, in these cases, our intention as developers is to urge the user to grant said permission, since it is the only way to access unique and incredible features of our app. Unfortunately, there are many scam applications that abuse sensitive permissions, so many users no longer trust anyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how I handle these cases in my own applications. I'm going to create a simple application that asks for permission to choose an image from the file system and then displays it in the center of the screen. In case the user does not grant the permission, I offer a brief explanation about why I'm asking this permission and add a button to request it again. If the user rejects the permission and does not want to be asked again, I also show a brief explanation and indicate that they should go to the system settings and grant the permission from there. In this case, the button will direct them to the app permissions so they can easily accept it. Now that we have seen what we are going to do, let's go with the tutorial. First, I'm going to create a new Flutter app and I'm going to open it in my IDE. I'm going to get rid of all of the comments in PubSpec and I'm going to start adding the required dependencies. I'm going to add the permission handle dependency, which is a plugin I think that is the most famous plugin used for requesting permissions. It interacts with the platform APIs and will use those APIs to request the needed permission. I'm going to add the file picker plugin, which is the plugin that I'm going to use to choose an image from the file system. And I'm going to add the provider, which is a package that I use for state management. The state management that I'm going to do in this tutorial is very simple. If you want to learn more about Provider, I have a tutorial series that you can follow. I will leave you the link in the video description. The next thing will be to declare this permission in the Android manifest. So the permission that we're going to use is the read external storage. And we're going to do the same for iOS, this time in the info.pulist file. In iOS, we request permission to access the photo library. And I'm going to add a descriptive message about why I'm asking this permission. This message will appear in the platform dialog that requests this permission. I'm going to alter the pod file. This is required for the permissions handle plugin to work. I'm going to paste the required code block. You can find more information about this setup in the permission handler website. I'm going to leave you the link in the description. Now we have everything ready to start working. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to create the model which will manage the state and will contain a few utility methods. First, I'm going to create an enum that is going to handle the state of the UI and the possible values will be that the permission has been denied, the permission has been denied permanently, we can browse files because we have the permission, and uh, an image is already been loaded and is shown in the app. I'm going to create the image model, which will extend from change notifier, and I'm going to create the relevant code in order to manage the state via this variable. I remind you again that I have a course about learning state management with provider. You have the link in the video description. Once we get the permission, I'm going to store the file selected by the user in this variable. And I'm going to add also a method to request the permission. So. The permissions in Android and iOS are different. In Android, we need to request the read external storage permission, and in iOS, we need to request the read photos permission. If the permission is granted, I update the UI, and I'm going also to return true. If the permission is denied or is not granted, and we are on iOS, 
I will set the UI as no storage permission permanent. Why am I doing that? It is because in Android, if you deny the permission, you can ask for it again, unless the user explicitly selects to not be reminded again. On iOS, if the user denies the permission, you can't ask for it again. The last case will be on Android if the user if the user has denied the permission for the first time. And at the end, I'm going to return false. Now I'm going to create a method to pick a file. This method will be used once the permission is granted. And I'm going to filter for images only. If the user has selected a valid image, then I assign to the file variable this new file and I update the UI. The next thing will be to create the image screen, which will contain all of the UI widgets. And to start, I'm going to create a widget only to show the UI when the user denies the permission. And this widget will contain an is permanent variable, which will be used to configure if we should show one message or other, depending if the user has denied the permission forever or only for this time. Also, we will send a void callback that will be used in the button to either request the permission again or either redirect the user to the app settings. Now I'm going to create the body of, the, of this widget and it will contain a message explaining why I'm asking for this permission and I'm going to add a very simple message but I recommend you that you write a compelling message in your app trying to make the user understand why are you asking for this permission. Also, if the is permanent variable is true, I'm going to add an extra message telling the user that they should go to the app settings because the app cannot request this permission again. And finally, I'm going to add a button to request the permission again or redirect the user to the app settings. Now I'm going to create a widget that will be a simple widget that will contain a button just to pick the file. This widget will be used once the permission has been granted. And finally, we need a widget to actually show the image selected by the user. So this widget will be shown once the user has granted the permission, has picked a file, and the file is valid, and then we are going to use this widget to render this image. The next thing will be to create the image screen, which will be a stateful widget, and you will see why later. I'm going to declare the image model here. And before creating the build method, I will create a private method that will be responsible for requesting the permission, invoking the method in the model. If the permission is granted, then I will call the pick file method in the model, and if something wrong happens, then I will show a snack bar to tell the user that something wrong happened. Now, in the build method, we just need to return a change notifier provider that will provide the image model and within a consumer that will react to the state changes. And we just need to detect the current image section and return the appropriate widget for each case. I'm going to use this private method that I just created as a void callback for these widgets. Now I'm going to delete almost everything in main.dart I'm going to substitute this home with the new image screen. I'm going to get rid of all of the comments and I'm going to execute this app to see if it works. So I'm going to pick a file, I'm going to click on allow. And yes, everything is working as expected. The next case will be to deny the permission. 
and try to ask for it again and then accept it. All right, works as expected. The last case on Android will be to deny the permission, then ask for it again and then deny forever. So as we have denied it forever, we can go directly to the system permissions and give the permission from there. But the issue is that we return to the app and we have the previous layout. So we need to add some kind of detection to detect once the user returns to the app to this permission. And the way we're going to do that is via the widgets binding observer. So add this mix in to your widget, add the observer, and create a dispose method to clean this resource when this widget is deleted from the widget tree. Now I'm going to create this private variable that you will see in a moment why I'm doing this. In the did change app lifecycle state, we can detect the lifecycle of the screen. And what we're going to do is to detect if the app is resumed, which means that the app is returning to the foreground and if the detect permission is true and also if the state of our app is in no storage permission permanent then in this case I am going to try to detect if the user has granted the permission outside of the app else if the state is paused mean that the app is sent to the background and the state is no storage permission permanent then I'm going to set this detect permission variable to true in order to detect if the user has granted the permission when returning to the app. I'm doing this using this state because I just want to detect this only when the app is in no storage permission permanent. In the rest of the status, it doesn't make sense to detect this because it cannot happen. So if the app has already the permission granted, if the user has denied the permission but only once, in Android, there is no need also to doing that. Now let's execute this to see if it works. Deny the permission. Ask again, deny again. Go to the app settings, give the permission from there. And now when returning to the app, yep, the app has detected the permission as we granted and has updated the UI accordingly. The last thing that I'm going to do is to execute this same sample in an iPhone. So here the flow is very similar. The first test will be to accept the permission the first time it's asked. And yes, it's working. The next thing will be to deny the permission and click on pick file and don't allow then when we click on open settings we are directed to the app settings where we can give the permission from there and when we return to the app what happens is that ios has killed our application and this is normal and expected in ios when you change a permission outside of the app the system kills the app and it restarts but the permission is granted and the user can select an image in this video, I have shown how to manage the permission request in a user-friendly way. If you found this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up. It helps me a lot to grow the channel. Also, consider subscribing for more content related to Flutter and mobile development in general. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.